Hey guys, it's Kat here from JPS Health and Fitness. And this is episode three of a four part series that is managing your physical and mental health during lockdown. Okay, so guys, for this episode, we're going to be covering some points on training. And then we're going to talk about a few things relating to sticking to routines and staying productive during lockdown. And then we're going to conclude with just a few points about sleep. All right, so starting with training, I just want to start by saying that I've had a number of people reaching out to me in the past few weeks, so clients and friends, to let me know that they're feeling a bit unmotivated to train or maybe feeling a bit down about feeling less fit or less in shape compared to how they used to be before this lockdown situation began. And I firstly just want to say that if this is you, it's okay to be feeling this way. I think this is the case for a lot of people right now. And when you do eventually, when we all can finally, you know, return to the gym and when sports and those sorts of things are back on, please just be kind to yourself. Remember that we've all been out of it for a long time and with the right steady training and nutrition, it doesn't take too long to get yourself back on track. So having said all of that, the return to the gym is still a bit of a while away, unfortunately. Um, so it is important to maintain some sort of regular training routine until then. It doesn't need to be a perfect, you know, incredible training routine, but just to maintain something. And, you know, why, why should we maintain some training? It's all about really the benefits to our physical health but also just because training improves our mood, it improves our self-esteem, it reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression, burns calories, preventing unwanted weight gain, of course, improves our body composition, improves our bone density, reduces our risk of disease. Like I can go on and on, but you get the point. Training is good for us. It is important for our physical and mental health to maintain training in some capacity. So this video is particularly for anyone whose motivation to train is maybe particularly low at the moment. And the three tips I'm about to give are some actionable tips that can hopefully help with this. Okay, so tip number one is starting small. So when you think about like if you're perhaps not doing any training at the moment or you're doing a very minimal amount, best to just perhaps say, okay, I'm going to start training two to three times a week. And for those two to three sessions, they are maybe going to have four to five exercises in them. I'm talking about like strength training at home, right? Sometimes when we try to say, okay, I need to start a program and it's going to be, you know, four to five sessions a week. And if each of those sessions, you know, takes an hour or whatever, if it's all too much effort, usually we, that can put us off or we don't stick to it in the long term. And today's video is all about things that we can stick to during this lockdown. So my advice here is start small. So even for example, if it's, you know, you want to get started with some running, start with just two 10 minute runs per week. Start with that. And if week after week, you're knocking that off, okay, then increase it to two 15 minute runs, or you know, three 10 minute runs or whatever, and then build from there. But start with what you can realistically do. And start with something that doesn't make you go, whoa, that's too much. Okay, start small and then build. That's tip number one. My second tip here is to give variety to your training. I think in lockdown, sometimes if we're doing the same or similar training each week, 
it gets a little bit boring and repetitive. That's something I've heard from a number of people and it's definitely something I've felt myself. You know, when we're always training by ourselves in our garage or in our lounge room or whatever it is, or, you know, we're always running the same loop in our 5K radius it does get a bit boring and that's when our motivation to do it can sometimes drop a little bit. So the first tip here is to give variety. Sorry, my second tip. So give variety to your training guys. So for example, I have a client who let me know the other week that something she's doing for her cardio once a week is an online virtual dance class. And I was like, cool, why not? That's great. Get your heart rate up. It's a, you know, 45 minute class, it's fun. She looks forward to it. That's perfect, okay? Something, I'm not saying everyone has to do a dance class, but I'm using that as an example. Give yourself things that you look forward to. They give you a little bit of fun in that time when we are, you know, in this lockdown. Um, so give yourself a bit of variety. Try to maybe change it up week to week instead of always doing the same things. So for myself, what I've done is I've created a bunch of resistance training programs to do. And what I do is each week that goes by, I recycle through those. So I'm starting with exercise training session one on a Monday of the week, and then a different training session on the Wednesday different training, training session on the Friday and all of them are different. And then the next week that goes on, then I'm back to the Monday routine again, which is completely different exercises from the Wednesday and the Friday. Anyway, the reason I'm sharing that is just if I was doing the same exercises on each of those days, then week after week after week, that is of course gonna get boring. You know, when you couple that with the fact that it's in the garage by myself, etc etc okay so please give yourself variety maybe try something new all right so my third goal is to set yourself small progression goals each week so think about where you currently are with your training and how you can build on that and when we're setting ourselves these goals please try I know it can be hard, but try not to compare yourself to where you used to be pre-lockdown. And just as a small example on this, so I have a friend who she's a marathon runner, like she's run lots of marathons um, in the past few years. Obviously, this year events have been cancelled and she reached out to me recently to say that she's feeling unmotivated, she's lost a lot of fitness and she um yeah just isn't isn't feeling good about that and i asked her what training she is doing and she said that she's doing just two 5k runs per week well she, yeah, she said you know just two 5k runs as if that's not good and i said to her you know what two 5k runs okay that's where you're at now Forget about, you know, marathons and things that you used to be doing. Just focus on right now. Next week, do two five and a half kilometer runs. And then focus on perhaps adding, say, 500 meters to your runs each week. Okay, let's not get into marathons, this and that. You know, thinking about what I used to be doing and how fit I used to be. Look at where you are right now and think, how can I realistically build on that in a way that's challenging me and I can see myself making progress and it's not too much that it's, you know, maybe a bit overwhelming. So the point there is start small. Don't compare to where you used to be. Don't worry about that. Just think about right now. What are you doing or what can you start doing? And then how can you build on that to make progress on a weekly basis to keep yourself engaged and challenged and feeling good and you just keep building it from there okay so those are the three points on training so just a quick recap point number one was start small start with what you can realistically do 
It doesn't have to be anything, you know, big and crazy. The second point was to give yourself variety on a weekly or a fortnightly basis to keep yourself engaged and so it's not getting repetitive and boring. And point number three was to set yourself small goals that you can build on week to week so you're making some sort of progress. It doesn't have to be anything major, but just some progress to keep yourself challenged. Okay, so that's it for training. Now I just want to talk a little bit about creating routine. So in this, in pre-lockdown days, you know, we're used to having routines, whether it's with work or uni or training or all of the all of the above even for some of us we used to having these routines to guide our days and give us a sense of purpose when we wake up in the morning and then a sense of achievement when we go to bed at night and at the moment with so much out of our control and these you know routines gone it's important to have some sort of structure in our days to help provide a bit of stability and just to, you know, re-establish that sense of purpose in the morning and achievement when we go to bed at night. So, for anyone who is out of work at the moment, so maybe not working, or for people, like if you're watching this and maybe you're on fairly reduced hours and... Um, you know, you've got a lot of free time and you're feeling a bit of that lack of purpose and productivity, these tips are for you. Okay, so number one is, it sounds like a small basic thing, but to give yourself some sort of to-do list every single day. And when I say every day, I mean Monday to Friday, like weekends is, can be switch off time, but yeah, so month, so basically every weekday. And the reason to give yourself a to-do list is to give yourself that sense of purpose because we get that satisfaction from ticking things off. We feel like we're achieving something and then it motivates us to move on to the next task. Even if you, if you don't have any work tasks to do, it can be something like in the morning getting up, writing out, okay, these are things I'm going to do today. I'm going to do the washing, clean out my bookshelf. Um, complete my resistance training program, read two chapters of so-and-so informative book or whatever it is. I'm just making these things up. But my point is you can write them out, of course, if they're work tasks, that good, that's good. And then we tick them off as we go. But even if they're not work tasks, it's all about creating that sense of purpose to keep us engaged and to keep us basically feeling like each day we've got things to do and we've got, yeah, it's all about that sense of purpose. Anyway, I think you get the point. So that's number one, to-do list. The second tip is if you're out of work at the moment, or again, if you're on really reduced hours, try to occupy yourself with some sort of stimulating task that keeps your brain active and learning. So an easy example is maybe to, like you could take some sort of online course that helps your career in some way, or it doesn't have to be for your career, it can just be something that you're interested in. But even another sort of easier example is just to read some sort of informative book. And even if it's just, you know, one hour per day on the days that you're not working, again, start small, it doesn't need to be anything big and crazy. But the reason for this is it keeps us engaged in a task where our, our brain is, you know, our brain has to work and we have to think and it's keeping us challenged and learning. And it breaks up that long, I guess, those big patches of spare time that we might have if we're not working and there's just a lot of time to kind of sit around and scroll on our phone and do those things. So the second tip here is occupy yourself with something stimulating, something that you look forward to doing. So a course that you're interested in, a book that's teaching you things that you're interested in. Okay, so the last tip 
on establishing routine and sticking to routine is to try to maintain a, the same sleeping routine each day. Because if we get a good night's sleep and if we're getting up at the similar time each day, this of course facilitates that consistency and helps to provide that sense of structure that I was talking about earlier to guide our days and keep us productive. So usually having a good sleep is facilitated by having a good wind down routine that actually allows our body to switch off and relax and get ready for going to bed. Now there's a lot of things that you can do for this. So I'm just going to very quickly list a few small strategies that I personally have found effective and I hope that these can help some of you who are watching as well. So the first thing that I found has helped a lot is turning my phone onto aeroplane mode as soon as I'm getting into bed. And the reason for this is it's like, okay, I'm in bed, phone's on flight mode, it's away. I'm not getting distracted by constant, you know, notifications or that temptation to scroll through Instagram or, you know, responding to messages. And then that provokes thought in our head and it keeps us awake. So I know it's, it's tempting because we all want to look at our phones, but I really encourage you have a go at putting your phone on flight mode as you're getting into bed because it's all part of that telling your brain, okay, it's time to switch off now, getting ready to wind down and go to sleep. The second tip that may help some of you is a bit of meditation before bed. And it doesn't need to be a long meditation session. It can literally just be 10 minutes. Something I've done before is 10 minute meditation sessions using an app called Waking Up. It's by Sam Harris. And basically the app, you know, having that meditation, again, it's all just about that switch off time because sometimes we're lying in bed to go to sleep. And even if, um, you know, our phone's away and we're, you know, tucked in bed and we're ready to sleep, we're still lying there thinking about all these things. We're thinking about the tasks we have to do tomorrow where, you know, thinking about a conversation we had with so-and-so or whatever it is, we're thinking about all these thoughts and they keep us awake. So the meditation is simply to provide that switching off and calming down. It stops that, you know, constantly thinking about things. So that's something that's helped me 10 minutes before bed. Okay, and my final tip on getting a good night's sleep. Now, this is something that's helped me might help some of you. I'm just going to suggest it for anyone who it might help. So a really good thing to do, I found, is actually decluttering your space. So if you're somebody watching this and your bedroom is usually a mess, that's okay. That's <laughs> unfortunately often the case for me as well. Something that can help is even for just, you know, 10, 15 minutes per night or even less is to completely tidy up your entire bedroom. You know, don't have crap and clothes on the floor and books and other stuffs on your bed. And like, it, it, that, that creates kind of a, a bit of a stressful space. Have everything clear and clean. And, you know, just doing that little tidy up each night as part of your bedroom routine, you get into bed and it's this nice feeling of like, oh, I'm so calm, like everything's clear. And again, it, it just facilitates that, that winding down. Uh, that's, that's helped me. I'm not sure it might help some of you watching. So I just thought I'd throw that one in there. Guys, that's it for today's content. I really hope some of you found this helpful. So just to recap on part two of this video, after we spoke about training, we've gone over creating routine. So we've got to-do lists, we've got occupying your free spare time with something that keeps your brain active and learning. And we've got sticking to the same sleep routine to facilitate having a daily routine. And of course that productivity that comes with getting a good night's sleep. 
And on getting a good night's sleep, we've just touched on creating a good wind down routine. And some tips for this are putting your phone on flight mode or turning it off as you get into bed. A bit of meditation before bed, even 10 minutes a night can help. And clearing your space before you go to bed. So you're in a clean, decluttered environment when you're getting in bed to go to sleep. Cool. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in episode four.